Hi, good morning everyone. So as I was um, proposing it, I'm coming here on live because there's been few people who have been reaching me and telling me that they feel inspired by the way I bring myself to the world and advertise myself. And um, yeah, they were asking me if I would uh, share about my journey uh, and uh, I thought I would do it here so more people can hear. And if you have more specific questions, I'm just checking because I just had hot chocolate. <laughs> if you have specific questions, write them down and I'll do my best to see them. Otherwise, I will uh, watch them, uh, reply to them later. So, Christianimas, hello. Don't know who it is, he's there, but welcome. So it's really interesting to to reflect. I've been reflecting on how Christian Mastit um, grew in me and where did it actually start it. And it feels like, like a domino effect. There's so many aspects in my life that has led me here. And it was quite sweet to realize that like a, a strong quality that I had as a child who was also a shadow was that I... It was difficult at home and so I was really seeking for freedom and adventure. Ah, Louise, hello. I was seeking for adventure and freedom and so I started to steal um, as a child and uh, I was really foxy. I was manipulating everybody, my sisters, my mum, my dad had left and it was really, yeah, my way of coping with it was to, to um, be wild and clever and this kind of led me to to go out and to start um, also working with horses which give me so much um, I felt so met by the horses and I felt like I was kind of like coming to grounding and also carrying on like I would go out in the field I would discover the the villages and um, and it would be my my haven really and so when I was 18 19 thinking what I would like to do with life I thought I just want to be with horses and so I studied occupational therapy because in Belgium and probably here as well um, that will allow me to kind of um, work with horses but also bring the more therapeutic background with it and so I studied occupational therapy for three years um, in Brussels and it was really amazing um, experience. It's quite funny to, to talk to a camera there. I can feel like I need to make the effort of like imagining you are right there sharing my story. So yeah, occupational therapy, it was, it was really amazing because I got to study like all the illnesses, amazing, all the illnesses from baby to people dying. And it was like I had like the, the passport with my degree of being a student to go and see and meet so many people and babies and children really in, in illnesses and um, disabilities and um, struggle and pain. And it was such a intense journey because I was just um, 20 at that time because I, I did a gap year but the the the, the um, immense gift that occupational therapy has given me one of them is that the idea is that you have a person that has an illness or difficulty something that is not working properly for them and they are not autonomous and then you have uh, something that they like to do and we can we would work with any craft or or any kind of like th um, arts like dancing uh, theater or woodwork and so the aim is that me as a therapist that is like I need to make this person autonom through an activity that they like doing and so my my work was to create something in between them and what they wanted to do 
um, that would bridge both of them. So they will get better by doing something that they like and is meaningful for them. And so my work was to adapt. I would have to adapt, for example, woodwork for somebody that hasn't got arms, for example. So we, we kind of been creating machines for using the legs, for example. Um, or we would um, or create like um, um, workshops. I'm realizing I could talk about this for hours. But just the last thing about this, like workshops for people in psychiatry with really deep anxiety symptoms. But they love stories. So we would create like I would create like a, a um, workshops of um, creating stories based on fairy tales, which is really reassuring the fairy tales because they have like like the hero's journey. They have a a cycle that is part of our human psyche, and so I will adapt um, storytelling workshops creation for those people. And so when I was like twenty two, I was like. I've got my occupational uh, 23 therapist diploma and I can do anything. It was just like, I'm so grateful for these studies because basically it's like our work was to work with problems and to create solutions. So, and that's still in my mind, like everything is possible. If there is something that doesn't work, if, if my office, my table doesn't fit in the corner, then I'm going to create something so that it fits. So it's really, it's really uh, empowering and playful and creative. And so I worked in psychiatry with, um, I worked in psychiatry in Luxembourg with people uh, dying. I worked with like uh, people, uh, psychos um, who were stabilized, like um, elder man, 60, 70. And it was amazing. It was just incredible, like to the, the connection with them. Hi, Richard. And then I worked with children who, um, Sometimes were autist, autistic, sometimes had psychos, but on top of that had sensory disability, so they couldn't see, couldn't hear. And so they were kind of in this world of whatever they were experiencing with their psychos and autism without being able to kind of orient themselves, sometimes with hearing, sometimes with seeing, sometimes with both. So it was like being with, with like creatures between humans and animals who had, had like quite visceral and primitive behaviors. So I had like a kind of a rich journey into some beauty and also some really pretty dark working with psychiatry people saying that they have a hole in their head and they're completely freaked out and they can't calm down. It's like a, it gave me a lot of a insight about how as humans we can really struggle and but then I realized like, okay, this is how we can struggle. But what happens to humans when we are well, before we get mental health, before we get illnesses. And so when I was 28, I quit it. Everything was my Saturn return as well and went to Scotland with my bike and started doing roofing. And, and I was feeling lots of turmoil and anxiety and discontentment and everything suddenly was starting to fall apart. And so I, I wanted to take myself um, back up in the wild to find myself away from everything because everything was pissing me off. And so I was in my bike in the rain with too much baggage and realizing after a few days and weeks that actually all my my discontentment was just following me around. And um, I started my sudden return like this, um, realizing that I needed help. Like I've been kind of like into this persona, like I'm a therapist, uh, look at me. And actually it's like I'm collapsing, like everything is, is, is collapsing inside of me. Hey Fabienne. Fabienne, <laughs> lovely. Um, and so as life does, as I was feeling really lost, I just met some, um, some people who were doing voice dialogue. And I didn't met them for another few months, but then I came down, they were in Devon, and I received the first session of voice dialogue. And the first session I had, I just didn't get it. Like, it was really confusing, but something in me was really uh, attracting me. So I, I went into the training in Dorset, and because I was feeling so much anxiety, and 
my anxiety around men, my relation to men with my dad having left and was really enhanced and I was just like, I was just crying to the sky to says like, what am I supposed to do with this vulnerability? It's just everywhere, like I can't connect with anybody without feeling this, this huge sense of being shit and being sad and being uh, lonely. And so um, the voice dialogue process for the first time in my life can give me this, the, the possibility of realizing that there are a lot of different parts in me. And there's a part I felt really tender and there's a part I was judging it. And there was a part I was trying to, to push it away. And there was a part I had ideas, but then it would get swamped by, down by the vulnerability. And so when this part of me that felt just so heartbroken and I can feel vulnerability here, to connect with her like it's just this young part I just didn't understand why um, my dad left when I was young and my mum was not able to look after me because she was overwhelmed and and so this young part got to be met by the facilitator and there was Peter who is now my colleague who was like is like an elder now so he was like a dad like figure and this part of me it was starting to have this part of me to understand what was happening like any parents would would play around like trying to put words for the child and so suddenly i started to make sense that what i was feeling there was nothing wrong about it and that actually somebody else was interested to be with me while i was feeling terror while i was feeling loneliness and all of this and so bit by bit I kind of went down and down and down into the vastness of the grief and the pain of this part of me and session after session kind of going more wider wider until it felt like at one point I just like um my body starting to to stop I st stopped crying and feeling mourning and grief and I felt my body turning and so the work with voice dialogue is like it's body wisdom, it's energetic rhythm. So you kind of follow what is happening and my whole body kind of turned. And there was a sense of like fierceness that was coming into my my system and I stayed with it, encouraged by by the by Peter. And suddenly I felt like I was a fucking like herd of wolf that was just like fucking like pissed off and fierce and it's just like we're not gonna let anybody come near you who is not like have good intention and it was the first time in my life that I touched into instinctual energy because before I was so identified with vulnerability that it was taking the old space there was no space for power because I was with vulnerability but I didn't know how to enter it and to really release it and so I touched into instinct and then I was already in love with voice dialogue but then it was just like oh my god like you know I've I'm swearing a lot recently, I'm quite enjoying it. <laughs> part of me wants to apologize and part of me just wanted to just do it. But I was just like, oh, I fucking have like a herd of wild wolf. And the fact of feeling being wolves, it was like the most amazing things, like best trip ever. And so I, I carried on with voice dialogue and, and like find, like really explore my vulnerability, the part of me that are holding that. And then once they were met and understood that start to be healed, there was just love, you know, this, this young part of just like f f falls in love with leaves and other people and, and um, it's got so much goodness in it. So this part was more available for me. And then I got in touch with more instinctual energy and then protect the parts of me, anger parts, and then sexuality, started to come through and then creativity and I've, it felt like I was just like all this part was starting to become available for me and as I carried on it's like it just it just keeps on happening and so now I have lots of part of me that I know who to call whenever I need and that are part of me and sometimes people say oh you you are so calm and so good at listening and all of this and and in my own experience is because like I have made space for and I, there's lots still for me to discover and I still have shadows and and vulnerabilities there keeps on coming but I'm, I'm at peace with it but the thing is that 
it feels like there's more space in me and I have a trust about what's the, the essence that is present in every human so when I work with a client now like I'm, I'm just like in that trust and, and I think it's really reassuring for people to feel that when I'm doing fooling I do trust humans humans and human, human psyche with this process it's like realizing that dark part of us you know like the part of me that was stealing and that was like um, manipulating and all of this this part is distorted when it goes too far but it's got an amazing amazing qualities and I actually use that part regularly because I call her like a foxy it's just like okay how to get this working you know it's like with marketing and to be quite opportunistic without stepping onto people's space but it's like really like okay there's this this that and then now I'm gonna use it um, for what I want to bring out so this is voice dialogue and as I was doing it the beautiful thing with voice dialogue is that you learn voice dialogue the first weekend by starting to facilitate others so it's really humbling because you realize that it's voice dialogue is a quite simple technique and then you you can kind of like um, um, get really really refined with it and more you get to know your own system more you can perceive what is happening into the other but the basic techniques is quite simple and so I we all straight away went at facilitating each other so now I realize that I really I really loved it because there's a part of me that just that just feels so nourished to 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 facilitate the unfolding of others it's just such a such an honor for me to see when people also go into these parts of them maybe the vulnerable parts and like bit by bit kind of like breathe into them and then allow them and then see the goodness that comes and then the detachment and then the other parts that just come through it's like fairy tales for the magical child in me it's just like oh my god who is gonna come through and you have like archetypes you know you have Xena or you have um, Zeus or you have um, Mother Mary or you have any kind of creatures dragons and deserts like everything is kind of everything that is available like in our psyche as human beings like with the work of Jung that this work is really inspired by is coming through and so it's really so it's really to really um, fascinating to see. So this is voice dialogue and how, because I started directly to facilitate, I just quickly got um, confident about my ability. And then I met Fu. Uh, I met Frankie, who was actually did also the training in voice dialogue, and and I went to do fooling with her. And with the flexibility of the past work in voice dialogue, I, I like fooling, who is a group practice where we drop into the different parts of ourselves as, as we are standing in front of each other. It just made sense totally. And for the playful part of me, it was just like, oh my God, like this is not only about therapeutic and healing process, although fooling is also therapeutic and healing. It's also playful. It's like, like, our psyche is like a playground like the fooling really uh, is teaching me to to even more like um, being shape-shifting and realizing that in that detachment there's so much energy that comes and so much freedom and the the possibility of feeling like oh my god like finally i, I am myself and the 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 healthiness of that and and that's why most people want to come back. It's because it feels like this practice really helps to allow us as, as a species to realize that all that is alive in us, actually we, it's material that we can um, enjoy and receive energy from and get more understanding about ourselves and then see other people being into their shadows and the places where they might be ashamed and then realizing oh my god like it's the same thank you for playing this because it's the same for me and so at that time i was living in a van 
I just came out of a relationship where, funny enough, even though I was doing voice dialogue, I still got stuck into my little girl, kind of got, got attracted by a man that felt really kind of sorted and confident about life. And, and we got together, but I was identified with her. And um, after a while, like, it just stopped. And uh, I was also exploring the relationship with three people. And it was amazing. And it was super painful. <laughs> super shadowy. And I learned a lot about myself and my needs. And so I was living in a van. And I was starting to feel like, actually, I'd love to start sharing all of these. And so somehow I'm... I met my next partner and then I found a, hi Laura, I found a, a place to live that actually had a workshop space. And my own understanding is, and I'm, maybe I'm a bit romantic, but is that it feels like things are really flowing for me when I'm really authentic with myself. And when I have the tools to really give space to different aspects of me. So that I can disidentify from them and then come back into the center. When I'm identified with, oh, I need to make it work and I don't have enough money or this is stressful, this person pisses me off. Then, then it feels like my own energetic field and my reality just like zoom down into two dimensions. And I'm like a flat cartoon and it's like nothing is happening and I'm trying, but I don't have energy and all of this. And then if I... If I acknowledge it's like, well, I'm scared here. Or there's a part of me that is scared of not making it in life. And society is scary. And to actually go into this part. And because having been helped with by facilitators to go into this part. And feeling the pain, feeling the fear. And staying with it. And allowing what we call like the emotional movement is like allowing fear to be there like children are scared they go back to the parents they are being reassured and then they can can go back out and it's like being able to do this with myself again and again i kind of cleared um i think a lot of um uh, identifications of parts of me that didn't serve me and so it feels like when i feel like well i'm, I'm right i, I I'm ready to settle down and start offering um, voice dialogue and fooling. And actually I was doing also wild Shakti, but this is another subject. Um, everything happens, basically. I got a place with a little cottage that I could afford. There was a workshop space in the countryside. I started doing workshops just in front of my house. And um, yeah. And it feels like from there, as I was moving along, like working with people, people would trigger me or the farm where I was got sold. Um, or there was like dynamics, I can't remember now, but I'm sure there's plenty of like triggers that were coming on the way. The thing is that I kept on going for Zalog sessions all the time. And because I was giving sessions as well, I also... By giving session is like having a session at the same time. So I kept like personal development going and the fluidity and what it feels like as an entrepreneur or wanting to offer who we are to the world is like we are the tool. And so the amount of self-care and um, continuous like um, personal development practice, I think is the is the tool um is one of the the key f of me feeling where I am now here. Um, oh, I'm talking a lot. There's a part of me who just love all of this. I'm just taking a moment. And then one of the really key things in Christianimas was my personal development and ongoing journey and my ability to to play. I like to use play and the same sort of like doing something with the pains, the aches, the shadows. Everything that was blocking me is like, okay, 
I can I, I know how to be with it so that's there and then the other thing is that I did a year-long course with Jules Swingfield and I met um, a lot of really good friends that I'm still in contact now and I met Sophie Jane Mortimer who um, at the time was doing uh, marketing now she's like a, a, a maternity leave but basically she loved marketing <laughs> and it was just like oh my god like it was such a such a um a shock for me because for me I, I still i was still holding a lot of judgment about society society is bad money is bad computers are bad <laughs> you know like and actually to me the really beautiful embodied sexy sensual mo woman that was just saying i love i fucking love marketing it's like and and what she would she would say is like she her passion is to make sure that people that have gifts are out there and she wants to help them because if she found it's just such a shame if people blocked with marketing and and so she kind of initiated me into the realm the spiritual realm of um, marketing which was it, it's just it just completely changed my 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 f set of mind instead of being into victims like oh there is this this cold thing marketing it was just like wow this is this is play and she taught me how to to use marketing as a way to anchor my own personal spiritual um, development and research for my work so whatever I would do is like this would be the content for my marketing and so this is what I'm doing here again is like whatever um, my my questions and my research are is what I'm sharing to people and that's what people are responding because it is authentic and it is um, right fresh in the moment and so I realized that marketing is like is like transporting what's inside to outside and um, and I learned like a few few techniques and learned about Facebook and and um, Mailchimp and creating a website. So that's Sophie, she's my star. And then personal development, Sophie. And then another thing is that I was doing living care work at the time, um, which allowed me to make money enough for me to live on. And then sometimes I had like jobs that was. I had so much time and then I would work on Christianimas and so there's there was no money stress and this is it just makes me so sad that that there's so much goodness in everybody and then the, the situation maybe having kids and money and and um, stress of life hi Shay yeah I had the privilege of being able to to do a job that would that was not stressful that was quite healing it was just hanging out with an elderly person cooking for them and then having lots of space and so I could kind of like start to learn about doing a website and and starting writing and starting learning how to advertise workshops so these are the, the three things my personal development the support of the marketing goddess and then the money enoughness that um, that I had, and because I had the money, then I could start employing people to help me, like a virtual virtual assistant, um, Alison, who would um, help me with my website when I need it. It's like whenever I have a question, she just replies, and like people like my cousin Fokosh, um, who would just she just she just loves computers, which. Uh, I'm getting better, <laughs> but it just loves trying to find out if there's a problem. It just loves trying to find a solution, which is just not a genie for me. Um, so yeah, just having like this key person and my, my partner was kind of like checking my English. And, and so I had like life was just bringing what I was needing around me um, with Christian Emerson. 
Yeah, so this is the main frame of Christian Mas, how it how it happened. And what it feels now that is keeping it really alive and exciting. I have learned voice dialogue, I've learned fooling, and now I'm kind of creating I'm just um designing new programs and intensive and workshops blending voice dialogue and full expression because um they are so complementary and i think that's that is the way that i have learned that i have been able to come out to the world more more freely is by all those techniques together and um and so in the it feels like it's a new phase for me now and i'm taking a creative break so though i'm doing a, a couple of workshops now to kind of like sit back and learn to re go back into my reflections and my notes and I, I want to map all the themes and topics that Christian Mas and Fulling are bringing together like what what are people working on what are the problems what they what is working for them what are the themes what are the patterns what are the psychological development aspects that are being touched by both of them so it's like i want to create like a um, a template on which i can base myself and then put myself more clearly out there um i was saying, going to say something else about that And so in order to do that, like another really strong aspect of the work is like having worked with Jules Wingfield and the menstrual cycle and also the art of mentoring, which is like a village building that honors all the, all the directions of the wheels and all the times of life. And it's basically like embodying the feminine aspects in the work. And so acknowledging that there is an idea and then maybe we put it out there or maybe we need to rest back and sit with it and be in. It's like there's the rest time, then the integrations and then the dreaming space. And then there's an idea and we put it in practice, we try it out and then there is rest and then there's an integration. There is nothingness, dream space and there's an idea. And so it's like until like four years, my life was just like new idea, putting in place. <laughs> New ID, putting in place. New ID, putting in place. And there was just no no rest. It's like, resting is like, oh no, this is very anxious. I will meet all my shadows <laughs> into the rest. So I will just go back into new ideas. And because I'm a Gemini as well, it's really easy for me to have new ideas. And, and what really gives like the um, the sustainability and the, the kind of regenerative aspect of Christian Mass for me, which I'm learning now, for example, by taking a creative break, um, research break, uh, this autumn and start of winter is actually to learn to slow down and to self-care and people who know me who've been to my house they would they know that i am like always make looking to make it more comfortable like self-care is like the another magic key because it's so healing for me to soothe my nervous system and to be able to integrate and and um, regulate myself and so all these aspects, these feminine aspects, um, are like a major, major uh, key of my work. And I know you might project that I'm always out there. The thing is that now I also have um, um, G. Bob, Rob, a friend who is doing social media for me. And so he's doing work for me. And so it's easy to project that I am always busy, but actually I am stepping more back and I am working on my creative projects. And so to finish off um, um, Ben has been asking me about how do I do this advertising from the heart and this really brings me back to the, what Sophie showed me um, is to realize that whatever is alive in us and authentic is the medicine we don't need to make it look a certain way, this or that. And so the way that I advertise is, is, is my understanding. Hi Elisa. 
the way that I advertise is is like firstly it's like something that's really dear to my heart like all these practices have basically kind of taken me out of a really grey anxious reality for me so it's like you know it's like this colorful goodness so the way i talk to it is because it's so dear for me and i think people feel that and because i've been into dark places and i still go into pretty dark places but by doing all of this it just my heart is more open and that i think it comes through and then using like beautiful images and quotes and it's like there's an old section about the part of me that loves to be organized I actually do have a really good <laughs> system of organizing whether the bookings whether all the content that i'm sharing my planning and all of these and if you have questions about that or you'd like to hear more just write them and uh, i would um, share about it another time so advertising from the heart is like being honest doing the the own inner work getting support by people who know or that that you resonate with and then organizing ourselves with allowing the the resting time because if i am stressed and i'm trying to do something it just doesn't work so it's like my work is to christianima's work is to look after myself and is to go on my bed and cry if i feel sad this is my work <laughs> you know and christianima pays for that which is a lovely thing because it's like I'm not gonna push myself away because it doesn't work. So it's like Christian Imas is forcing me to be really authentic and really uh, integral. And a last thing about procrastination, which is a, such a important and um, questions and so easy to be in procrastination in this society that doesn't kind of welcome the naturalness of what is it to be human being you know <laughs> like society just wants us to go into new ideas okay and put it in place and work and new ideas and work and new ideas and work and new ideas and there's no space for like um integration gestation rest dreaming connection with spirit and all of this and and so I, I, I firstly really want to give my um, empathy for all of you that feel this part of you that are procrastinating from doing what you want to do. And my invitation would be to be really curious about which path are there. There might be a path that feels anxious, that feels worthless. There might be a path that feels that doesn't have any... Um, motivation or doesn't trust that this could happen or there's a part that feels angry about society and just gets into this kind of teenager like reactive blaming others or that feels like victim or a part that feels overwhelmed so you see all of the procrastination is like it's like the lid of underneath probably a lot of different dynamics and part of us that just needs space to be met and to be understood and given space to because when parts of us act in we call it clusters it's like there's a vulnerability and there's a part that's judging it and then there is a part that just um, um, distracts or goes into addictions they all function and they all are attached to each other and so there's no space for them to really bring the the um, essence of each of them. So the overwhelmed part does never get space to get out of overwhelm because it's kind of like um, pushed down by the one that the judges and the one that judges is trying to help, but it's just like doing it in a way that is harmful. And then the one that goes into addiction is trying to help to come out because it's far too much, but it's still not going to the overwhelm and then there might be collapse. And, and so this, these dynamics, these clusters, are kind of keeping us frozen. And until we see them, and until we find a way to kind of give space to each one of them at, this, at, at a time, and then I said, okay, you are here, you are there, 
and then feeling them by our sides then I think it's really hard to get things done because you are trying to do something but then you have to push all the parts of you that are resisting, that are angry, that are scared and reduced it's like pushing against everything instead of like being like a parent it's like okay guys I know you're scared, I know you this, I know you that I, I'm, I give you space and then now that you feel more relaxed now I can do my work and what comes through me is my deepest longing in this life what seems to be my essence is to do this and and to do that and need this and so oh yeah i need my inner secretary the part of me is reorganized and actually i can actually access it you know and then go into secretary she's got glasses mine <laughs> and it's just like okay spreadsheets and 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 she has a whole space instead of having the judge that comes in and the child that says no 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 i don't want i'm scared and this it's like it's really hard to do things when it's like all this part of us that are creating the space. And I'm just realizing that Ben, you asked a beautiful question as well about my own relationship to Christianimas. And I was really inspired. I did um, uh, a year of training with um, Madeleine Rustai, um, Body Informed Leadership. That was just amazing. And I'm still integrating and I will share more about it. About... Um, the nervous system and the way that we are um, conditioned by our culture and our society without re us realizing. And she said to me that she she loves body informed leadership like a thing. Like she she's try to remember exactly what she said. I s still feel the goodness of the way she said it. It really awaked something in me. Like Sophie did awake that market marketing love and playfulness but Madeleine she said that um, she didn't push it to get her business out there a lot she has been more tending to really have a really good relationship with her business and so that it was more important to have really good quality clients and participants hi Arane just talking about Madeleine you might know her and so she talked about the, uh, the relationship that she built up with her business that felt so satisfying that she didn't need it to have lots of bookings and lots of money. And I f it was like a revolution for me to realize because business is like, okay, making money kind of things. And actually, and I wish I had another name. Maybe you have another word that could be used to inspire me. It's like, it's not business. It's not, it's not business. It's like, bringing the work out outside into the world it's like sharing and so before sharing it out there it's like really having a relationship with it and and i'm still working on that i love ben that you asked me that um yeah it feels a bit like like with relationships there's two people and then there's the relationship in between and I can love the other person, but I can also really love the relationship. And it feels like it's the same with Christiane Mas. And actually, I feel like I need to sit a bit more with this. And if I have uh, some things that might be interesting, I will share. Et voilà. Wow, it's like almost 45 minutes. It was really nice to share all this. If you have remarks, I can't really see that you have put messages here. I hope I haven't missed but I will see when I, as I publish the video. So this is some bits around how I brought Christianimas out and the keys for me. And um, yeah, don't hesitate to share your comment, reflections or questions. Blessings to you into this first day rainy here in Devon, which is really good for the plants. I look forward to next time we see each other. Blessings.